In the previous few lessons, we looked at external parasites and internal parasites, mainly insects and so on, that affect your health of animals. We also looked at certain things that, or certain characteristics that tell us that animals are healthy or they have an illness, the disease, and so on. And now we're going to focus on things that are not animal related or insect related, is mainly poisoning in animals, so any inorganic substances that actually can cause um, diseases in animals. Um, Mainly some of them are in plants and other things are like salts that animals ingest. So mainly of ingestion of poisons. So firstly, we're going to look at plant poisoning. So basically, something to remember is the toxicity of plants can be affected by certain types of characteristics or certain types of things. So all plants aren't equally poisonous and the same species of plant is not always as poisonous all times of its life cycle. So it depends on certain things. So the first bullet says there the nature of the poison does determine how poisonous the plant is. Then also the soil type. So chemically, this can also influence how poisonous the plant is. Climatic factors, meaning is it summer, winter, when do we find it, the season, that type of thing. Uh, also with climate, is it a rainy area or is it a hot area, hot, dry and humid? And then also um, the stage of growth part of the plant, especially sometimes the leaves are poisonous, other times plant uh, the, the flowers, other times the entire plant. Then also is there dehydration in the animal itself, um, or even the plant, is it plant dehydrated? So we need, yeah, it's the plant specifically. Um, is it the normal plant or has it been dried out and now it could be more toxic because there's no water on the inside of the plant that actually dilutes the poison. Then also the species of animals. Some animals are more susceptible than others. The size of the animal, you can imagine that a very, usually young animals, meaning a smaller animal or um, a rat, say, uh, if we were to compare that with, let's say, a cow or cattle, they are generally bigger. So their bodies can actually handle much more poison before they die than, say, a small amount can actually easily kill, like a rodent. Uh, same thing for young animals versus an adult animal. So the age of animal then as well, and the condition of the animal, are they healthy or not? So on the other side, when does plant poisoning actually occur? So basically, it can happen during food scarcity. If there's no other option, the animal will eat a toxic plant because they are hungry and they need something to eat. Then overgrazing or overstocking. So again, if there's no other option, they will have to eat the poisonous plants. And poisonous plants grow first after felt fires. So usually, again, if this comes back to the fact that if there's no other option, they will have to eat this plant because if there's no felt left, everything's been burned, charcoal, these poisonous plants are first to grow and it's green and it seems very delicious to the animals. Then also things like hail and wind, so climatic factors can cause these um, pods of the uh, poisonous plants to drop on the ground and even though the animals are just trying to graze on grass now there would be pods in between and that is how they ingest them also accidental poisoning by contaminated food so this is important for farmers just to check that they don't give the animals contaminated ones plants become toxic also when contaminated with certain fungi and it's the fungi that actually produce these micro uh, mycotoxins and also fertilizers use um, can also increase toxins so again if the animal for some reason ingests fertilizer fertilizer, high amounts can be poisonous, and then also younger and older and pregnant animals usually are much more susceptible, makes sense. So the first type of um, poisonous plant we're going to look at, because there's mainly three, is maize fungus. So for this guy, Aspergillus flavus, you guys don't have to remember the um, Latin name for them, but it's interesting to see it, and also if maybe in the exam they use the Latin name, be able to identify it. But usually when they give you a picture of, let's say, maize, like the bottom here we see, um, the fungus is growing, quite gross, growing on the maize cobs, they will just ask you identify this plant poison. So that will be then maize fungus. So this fungus, it grows by producing thread-like branches, hypha or molds, so basically on, as you can see the picture, on the maize. It also secretes certain enzymes that break down complex food sources like the maize. So they also grow on peanuts, cotton and tree nuts because they break down these enzymes and the fungus breaks down these compounds and that is then a food source for your fungus. And the third 
bullet, growth of the fungus on food leads to contamination with aflatoxin, which is a toxic and carcinogenic compound. So when they mention aflatoxins, associate that type of toxin with the maize fungus. That's why it's boldened. So it's very toxic and carcinogenic means it can actually cause cancer. So if the animals ingest a lot of this, or even humans, uh, if for some reason we don't die from it, um, it can actually cause cancer in our bodies and then we can actually die from the cancer. Same thing for the animal. So your maize fungus, certain symptoms, how do you know the animal has been poisoned by this fungus? So basically they have lower production, they have liver and immune system and growth problems, and generally any signs basically that that's, they're showing ill health and also chronic symptoms it takes a bit longer include sleepiness depression and in chickens reduced egg production and lowered feed intake and also the animals generally are restless um some, obviously because something is bothering them they have weight loss they sometimes have a rough coat and mild diarrhea specifically in ruminants then also they can show some nervous system disorders meaning they struggle to move so or they act in a different way so it seems like their personality has been um, changed, but in actuality it's because they struggle to move and use, they can't really use their limbs as they usually did. So it's actually very general symptoms. So usually this can be confused with other diseases as well. But it's important that when you do see these uh, some of these symptoms in the animals to maybe think it could be a plant poisoning. Then also some treatment for this then. Infected feed should be removed immediately. That's the best thing. So you have to check the feed. If there's nothing wrong with the feed, then it could be a different type of um, disease the animal has. So then second bullet, protein and vitamins, A, D, E, and K, and B should be increased. This is mainly just to boost the immune system of the, of the animal. So that's actually the main thing um, a farmer should try to do, just boost their immune system so that they can actually fight this poison. And lastly, the animal should be kept calm to reduce any secondary infections. Makes sense. If they are very stressed and they can actually hurt themselves trying to get rid of whatever making them feel sick, it can actually cause secondary infections. Now then we move on to poisonous bulbs. So the poison bulbs, actually a couple of different species referred to as bulbs. It's basically these plants that have Oh, sorry, I have a bulb here at the bottom with um, the roots and everything and then the plants, but the, the bulb itself is underneath the soil. So there's a couple of uh, subspecies that we call poisonous bulbs or can be poison bulbs. But the main thing here or the one to remember is the Cape tulip. So it's a tulip, um, the poison itself is called by a variety of bulbs. And one example is the Cape tulip, which we have here at the bottom. So this is actually the, what the flowers look like of the Cape tulip. Secondly, one leaf Cape tulip is difficult to control uh, chemically due to dormancy of the bulbs below the ground. So the main thing is usually after summer and during winter, these bulbs actually don't die out because they're underneath the soil. And there's a lot of uh, starch, you know, food re um, resources, nutrients in here that keeps the plant alive. So then when we have summer again and there's enough rain and so on, they can sprout again. Or then regerminate or just you know become alive again and then the flowers come back so they become dormant meaning they sleep during winter and they don't die out so that's important to remember for farmers uh, the third bullet all parts of one leaf cape tulip are toxic and to grazing animals so whether it's the roots or the stem or the flowers this plant is highly toxic so that's actually very um, bad for the animal and also very important for farmers to make sure that this tulip is not present on their farm so some symptoms they will have diarrhea. They will also bloat, meaning their stomach enlarges. They can do excessive urination and dullness here means they look by dull, the eyes are kind of lifeless. Animals are often very thirsty and lose their condition quickly because they stop eating after a while. They have a lot of abdominal pain, meaning stomach pain. So they can sometimes be groaning or grinding their teeth and looking at their stomachs, meaning there's something wrong in that area. And also usually they have a rapid respiratory rate, they'll be breathing very quickly. So some treatment for this, again, the treatments in e each of these cases is very, very important. Plus, you guys will have to be able to identify these um, poisoning, um, the poisonous plants. So you have to be able to identify and then say the treatment. So in this case, the treatment is to prevent animals from consuming any more plants. So get rid of the plants in the area. If, they, if you do know there's poison bulb in the felt, it has to be taken out. Or the animals should not be able to get to the poison bulb.
Then also, so they're going to give animals a fast-acting purgative, which is basically like a laxative, so as you get the stomach moving of the animal to make their, well, to basically give them a runny tummy. And then thirdly, activated charcoal is very, very good to give to the animals because this absorbs the poison. And here in the top in the corner, we actually have charcoal tablets that humans can actually also take. So if we also ingest poison, we can um, pop one of these pills in our mouths and then the charcoal will absorb the poison. The same thing will happen for the animals. For animals generally, they just crush it and make it into a powder format like at the top here. It's very difficult to get animals to swallow a pole. So usually in powder format, crush it into the feed, mix it into the feed, and then give it to the animals to eat, and eventually it'll absorb the poison. So thirdly, we have the thorn apple. So it's not really an apple, but the reason, or the fact that it got its name is because it actually looks kind of round. Um, the, the seed pods look quite round, and obviously it's very, very thorny. So this is when it's still... Um, I want to say in the wet stage when it's hydrated and when it is dehydrated, this is what the seed pods look like. They dry it out. As soon as they dry it, they open and here we see, see the seeds on the inside. And this is a picture of what the flowers look like. And I, I included all three of these pictures because many times they actually show, show you guys the flower and then ask you what poisonous plant is this. And then usually people will say it is the poison bulb. It, because it has a flower in your textbooks, but in reality, this type of flower with the pointy leaf edges, uh, leaf edges here, this is actually for the thorn apple. So associate these um, sharp edges with the sharp edges of the the seed pod. So it's the thorn apple. So be able to identify this poison plant from the flower as well. So the first bullet, all parts of the plant contain dangerous levels of poisons, atropine alkaloid. So again, please associate the atropine alkaloid type of poison with the thorn apple. And the acute poisoning is generally rare, but presence of these alkaloids in feed may be responsible for chronic toxic effects, so meaning the animal can live with this for a while. So the effect of the thorn apple can, be, can take a long time to show and also stay with the animal for a long time. Um, then a third bullet, pigs are the most sensitive to thorn apple poisoning. And then also your cattle, horses and chickens. And usually, actually, sheep are not affected by this poison because they synthesize the atropine esterase enzyme. So basically what this means is a specialized protein that they generate in their bodies to actually counteract the effects of this poison. So sheep is your odd one out to remember. So then your thorn apple poisoning, uh, some symptoms. Generally, they have um, reduced feed intake, retarded growth, they have dry mouths, they can breathe quicker, the heart rate will be quicker, their pupils will dilate, and they will have muscle tremors. So still a little bit of general symptoms. But then please remember the treatment. Basically, the best thing is to prevent your animal from eating again this plant in the first place. So areas containing a toxic plant must be camped off to prevent the animals from getting there. Also get rid of any poisonous plants in the pastures. Monitor your animals to see whether they do have any signs of poisoning, but this you can actually do for any type of poisoning. Then also do not overgraze the felt, also the same for the other plants. Then boost animal immune system with supplements and licks. So again, best thing is just preventing actually is the best treatment. Then also provide enough water for livestock because the water will dilute the poison. Okay, so that's the end of the plant poisoning. The next lesson will be about salt poisoning.